nomination exercises, but also yesterday's big launch and unveiled rather at Uhuru Park with the National Super Alliance. We saw Raila Odinga being unveiled as the candidate, presidential candidate, and uh, Kalonzo Musioka running mate, and of course the other three candidates, the proposed structure, if in fact they're able to unseat the Jubilee administration in the elections, which are 101 days away. So, to talk more about that, we are joined in studio by Kevin Osido, his Executive Director, County Governance Watch. Thank you for joining us. Asante Sam. Good to see you. And you too. What do you make of Nyeri County? Isn't that interesting? I think uh, the citizens are fed up mm -hmm. with uh, too much talk. And what people are interested in right now, it's clearly evident that uh, citizens need service delivery. And their levels of accountability are also much more uh, hastened and heightened because people want to be able to have, have leaders mm -hmm putting their actions where their words are. And yeah. I think Nyeri County is already evidently clear in terms of uh, the fatigue that people have insofar as leaders who are in, in office yes. and are unable to deliver services. Yes. Yep. And you've been watching the nomination exercises, the primaries across uh, the board, all the political parties. Of course, we still have uh, the ODM Nairobi primaries set for Sunday. But overall, what do you make of them? Of course, there are those that have been disgruntled. You saw the likes of Jaguar who yes. uh, feel that this has been taken away from them unfairly, that they had actually won. Uh, but largely, there are those who are saying this was a great exercise. Exercise, even the cases where we saw uh, the exercise in, exercises nullified and then later uh, taking place, uh, there are those who are satisfied, there are those that are not too happy. Uh, my sister, you know, demo democracy doesn't exist in a vacuum. And democracy, therefore, um, is housed into what governance uh, people like myself would call institutions. And part of these institutions are political parties that are therefore charged with the responsibility of ensuring that. Uh, uh, voices of the people are not only heard, but they are also seen to be actively participating in democratic processes through their political parties. Now, what has happened in Kenya in the past uh, one month in terms of political party primaries is uh, one, in my view, would say we are growing yeah. our democratic uh, principles and system and style as Kenya is growing. Mm -hmm. But in terms of uh, public participation, the people's voices in parties that is really an issue that we still have to end. In fact, it reminds me of this quote by Joseph Stalin, that the people who vote have no, they have, uh, no say. They have, actually, they decide nothing. Mm -hmm. It is the people who count the votes that decide everything. And it is clear in terms of what we are seeing happening. It's quite disturbing what we have seen going on in Nairobi. Of course, ODM now has lots of lessons to learn. And I think probably uh, they were waiting for Jubilee to be able to dispense of their Nairobi issues so that then they can be able to do theirs on Sunday. But I think uh, Ceteris Peribas, all factors remaining constant, political parties must be seen to be taking lead in terms of, uh, in terms of having the citizens make their voices count. And of course, having the leaders that you want. I was really disturbed by what happened to my friend uh, Jaguar because it is not fair that when you are uh, sure that you have won, and we have seen this happening in almost uh, all over the country. We saw it happening in Migori where two governors were declared and issued with certificates. We saw it happening in, um, of course, in Homa Bay. We saw it happening in Kisumu. And the same thing is happening in Kisumu. It's just that I think for Kisumu, the party leadership is really hands-on. Of course, with the entry of uh, His Excellency the Deputy President, now managing the logistical issues of, of the party. And so you don't see a lot of fallout and too much talk. Because yeah. if you opened it up to others, then I think it would be much more nastier than what we've seen happening with, with ODM or NASA. Because sometimes does it... Um become a challenge to figure out what is what in as far as there are largely many candidates unless they won then the process they will describe it as unfair you know if they don't win then some game was played some malice you know is behind yeah. their walls and then on the other side that the party primaries in Kenya largely yeah. have always had challenges it yes. appears to be even when there was that extension from the court there are many who felt even if you gave them a year you know to prepare you'll still face quite a number of <laughs> challenges so when we see these kind of things happen how does one who's watching an observer uh, able to pinpoint is it just disgruntled people who not accept defeat or truly are there issues uh... let me let me tell you because uh still brings us to the question of pre uh, elect electoral preparedness because uh for example in nairobi county in one ward which is nyamakima ward you have 
almost 74 candidates, MCAs, vying on one party ticket. Right. And you cannot stop people from uh, coming up, or rather coming out to be able to vie for political uh, leadership positions, because that is their democratic right. But still takes us back to the role of political parties, because why should you be able to wait, yet you know that disputes within political parties, one, you, so you sort them out at the IEBC level, but even before you get to the IEBC level, you have political party dispute tribunals. Okay. But even before you get to that level, you should already have known, because parties have time frames within which candidates are supposed to express okay. their desire to run for office. Right. So you should be able to have a number of X people who are vying for this particular position mm -hmm. and be able even to look at the kind of attractions of people that they are able to, to, to garner. Mm -hmm. Now, for, in, for, for instance, if you look at uh, Honorable Minor Commander, and uh, Jaguar. Mm. You know that these are people who are much more of uh, crowd pullers. So you already begin preparing for fallout and managing that kind of tension. Right. That also means that yeah. you also know that your, the number of people are going to turn up is going to be higher than is expected because that's part of what we have observed in these nominations. Okay. Yeah. And what do you make of some of those comebacks, you know, from people we thought had left the uh, public and political landscape and then are back, Kimunye, for example, and others? <laughs> surprised? Of course, uh, not surprised. Because as we said at the beginning of this uh, uh, interesting show, was that people are watching. And Kenyans are, of course, uh, every day they are learning from experiences and they have certain expectations of their leaders. Mm -hmm. And so I think that uh, two things for Kimunya. One is that he is, um, of course, a resident of that area where he was running uh, for office. Number two is his place in the civil service or the public service, mm -hmm. that he was able to have an opportunity for people to see that he can actually be able to deliver certain things. And of course, his ardent support for, uh, for the kingpin of the region, because Kenyan politics is much more ethnicized and we look at who is uh, calling the shots in that area. Mm. And he is one gentleman who's been very categorical and clear in terms of his support for His Excellency the President, that yes, I am going in this and uh, we have learned my lessons and we have to ensure that uh, President Uru Kenyatta goes back to office. And if you give me this, this, this opportunity to be able to serve you, I'm then going to move to the national level to also be able to uh, help the president to campaign and and people resonate with those kind of narratives which I think was also very helpful in terms of uh, having him come back to yeah. to politics and those are some of those political uh, comebacks that we've witnessed from this exercise and the Jubilee uh, MP Naivasha Jin Kihara uh, clinching that uh, nomination for uh, Jubilee to vie in August 8th elections. Before we wrap this up, let's go to yesterday. Yeah. And it had been a long-awaited decision. Finally, it's out there. The structure is known. The presidential candidate, flag bearer, uh, Raila Odinga, and, uh, of course, running mate, uh, Kalonzo um, Musioka. Uh, what was that like for you, after all the anticipation and what you were able <laughs> to hear also of the rest of the structure for the other three principles? Uh, for me, I wasn't surprised. Of course, I expected. And in the morning, we were here with Mike, uh, uh, your colleague and my friend, Mike Onjeka. And we, of course, made the prediction that uh, the person who was going to be declared, the, president, uh, the presidential flag bearer, was going to be the former prime minister. Now, that really, I don't think it caught anyone by surprise. Of course, we'd had lots of names being floated. But uh, Raila Odinga comes with certain things. And that is, in my view, what I believe that uh, NASA was looking up uh, towards uh, giving him, of course, uh, that final bu bullet, the narrative that he's been able to propel. Number two is we are looking at um, the kind of massive massiveness in terms of political um, support and mobilization. And I think out of the five, Raila Odinga is this person who is able to more or less combine the energies of all these people. Yeah. But in terms of uh, public expectation, and I won't go into what Jubilee is thinking and what their strategies are, because I think this is going to be what, like, more or less similar to what we saw in 2013. And if things uh, were to remain as they were, of course, we know that right now we have about uh, the voter registration results are out. And if you look at the, if we were to look at this, the zoning system and uh, structure of politics, then you can automatically tell uh, by making assumptions who will be the next president. Yeah. But in terms of public expectations, I think that citizens or Kenyans, we have moved to the level of not looking at our ethnic uh, conclaves, but looking at service delivery. And that, those are some of the benefits of devolution. So people are looking at this team or this coalition that is going to stand taller and stronger 
to be able to guarantee services, for example, health, education, water, agriculture, right. because people want food on their tables. People want to be sure that we'll go and, and get uh, health services, we'll be able to go to school, and we are given, uh, we have good education and all that. Okay. And Jubilee has been te tested and tried, and I think uh, the jury is, is out there. It's and out so there. NASA has now told us that this is so and so is going to be our flag bearer. So Kalonzo Musyoka in his speech said that uh, NASA had been able to nip in the bad the gerrymandering that was witnessed in the last <laughs> MOU the last yeah. time around and that with this agreement that has now de been deposited with the political the register of political parties uh, there will be no room to you know change or uh, betray or turn around however what meaning and wait, if at all, does it hold in light of our constitution and that executive power is vested in the presidency? Of course, uh, part of the discussions we had with uh, Michael yesterday was the amount of time. To be honest with you, he didn't have to take uh, NASA all, all this time to be able to give us a name that, of course, we expected. But uh, as I said yesterday, so will I repeat that uh, they had to spend time in dealing with those gaps of, of course, um, uh, lack of uh, honesty, I mean dishonesty within the agreements. Of course, we, uh, we saw the Secretary Generals going to deposit that, that, uh, that agreement with the registrar of political parties. And these are some of the gaps that had to be filled within, in my, uh, in my view, and from a governance and leadership perspective within NASA, because Kenyans are also looking forward to what will His Excellency Kalonzo uh, Musioka say. Because he's been, uh, this gentleman who's been saying I was betrayed and I'm not ready and willing to go through that. And I think that now NASA has been able to take uh, serious uh, action in terms of dealing with the gaps and, and the possible fallouts. And I think now that the main um, task ahead of them is the messaging around that we have dealt with all the gaps and that we are going to be honest to ensure that uh, the agreement is, of course, uh, followed to the latter and that we are going to ensure that our spirit is also uh, equal to the spirit that we are going to put into the into the document mm. and that also goes in line with the kind of arrangement which they have and i continue to say i'm looking forward to the space of the female gender in uh, especially the pentagon because uh, women as we can see are missing i think we need to move to the level of just having women to come and dance around and shake our hands and and provide flowers around the tables where the men are seated but that notwithstanding i i, I believe and think that in the spirit of the constitution the, there is no problem even in calling an office premier and all that because that is constitutional insofar as Article 132, subsection 2, yeah. and of course Article 152 uh, in terms of the cabinet is concerned. Yeah. And all those are functions that are given to the president to be able to provide uh, offices and opportunities for people who are going to ensure that the spirit of their manifesto, which again they said they are, they are going to launch, yeah, yeah. Will, be, will be concerned in so far as delivery of what they said they are going to, to deliver. All right. Many thanks. Kevin Osido, Executive Director, County Governance Watch with us here on World. We appreciate Asante. your thoughts on this subject of uh, the nominations, of course, as well as the NASA politics. Now, in Uganda, detained government critic Dr. Stella Nyanzi appeared in court on Wednesday to appeal her bill.